cable tie gun mechanism. We're gonna tear apart this cable tie gun. We're gonna study the mechanism, how it works, and we're gonna put it into CAD. Essentially what it does is it pulls the nylon cable and it cuts it. Pulls it, you pull it again, and then it's gonna cut it. I'm gonna show it to you in slow motion. There we have it. So first let's study the mechanisms that we can see with the naked eye. We have this torsion spring that's always coming in contact with this face here. So that's the torsion spring. It has it as its default state. As soon as you pull the trigger, this metal will translate in that direction. And when you pull the trigger also, as soon as this item moves, this part would lift because these two faces are coming in contact with each other and there's lubrication there. I don't know if you can see, but there's a little bit of lubrication there. So let's pull the trigger and see how those two faces come in contact with each other, which makes the back lift because we have a pivot point. Once you come into the end of the trigger motion, these two faces come in contact with each other and you'll see a little bit of metal mark on the red plastic there. What's interesting about the plastic housing is that it serves as a place where all the hardware, the mechanisms can be held in place and it restricts to the desired motion of the hardware and the mechanisms. For instance, this torsion spring, its legs are held in this channel that goes through here. Um, this metal that translates in that direction when the trigger is pulled goes across all those faces and it slides along those faces. So the housing, the plastic housing, serves to limit the range of motion and to hold the hardware in place so the, mechanism, the mechanisms function appropriately. I took this apart. This is simply a thumb screw, a spring, and a threaded insert that the thumb screw is engaging with. And as you shorten the distance, it creates more spring tension. So the short distance, the more it's gonna pull on the hook, more spring tension. What I'm interested in is two things, if you guys could comment below. Do you think this spring is customized? Because it was just like this when we disassembled it. Or do you think that it's just wear and tear and that's what caused the spring to uh, tilt at an angle? But it seems pretty solid, like it's not moving. So it, I don't think that it was wear and tear. I think that this spring was customized. What do you think? Please let me know in the comments below. And question number two is, how do you think that they managed to keep this spring in place? So let me unscrew this. We have the thread insert and we have the spring, but I can't take it out. So how is that spring being held in there? Anyone? But before we can disassemble the trigger, we have to detach this mechanism here in the back. The way this works is that as you turn that knob, that little square here is gonna move down and that's gonna let the user know how much force is being utilized. So if you turn it to the left, it goes up. So I'll be interested to see what's going on in here that's making this move up and down. Let's take out this alignment pin now we can lift the trigger. All right, so this is how this mechanism works. I put this 3M adhesive in the back just to raise everything off because that's how it will be once the trigger is inside. So keep an eye on this piece of sheet metal. I'm gonna put the other sheet, piece of sheet metal on top. All right. Now this handle, this trigger, is gonna have this dowel pin here. And the dowel pin is gonna interact with these two surfaces. Keep that in mind, we're gonna take the handle away. Now here is this placer, this dowel placer. It'll go there. But right now we're gonna replace that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my pencil for that. So this is how it'll work. We have the spring that's constantly pushing the trigger back. 
once you engage the trigger, step two, dial pin from the trigger comes in contact with his face. Step three is behind the sheet metal. Is this surface coming in contact with that surface up there? And since they're coming in contact, the sheet metal is going to want to move that way and it's going to drag both sheet metal with it because it's a placeholder pin. And that's what's going to cause the motion, the translational motion of this sheet metal towards the right. And that's the premise of the mechanism. Well, first I'm going to show you how I did the CAD model. This is a master model technique and a hybrid of resilient CAD model. So here we have the skeleton group up here, all the master models, the skeleton sketch, excuse me. So we're going to scroll all the way up. First thing I did was import the photograph and a separate sketch. I scaled it, got my scale. My style is to color code bodies. It helps me identify the sketches better. It's just my personal style as an artist on CAD. So here's the body on red. I made it red because the injection mold of the body is red. So it's easy to remember. Then I made the trigger. And if you want to see this a little bit better, you can remove the picture from the back. And that's what it's looking like so far. Now I did, there are three sheet metals. And sheet metal one is the green one. Let's take a closer look. There it is. B sheet metal. And lastly, C sheet metal, which is that turquoise one right in the middle. Got a couple of dowel pins, placeholders, and lastly, some ribs that you may see there. These are the ribs. Then I proceeded to make the solid bodies. The plastic injection bullet, then the trigger. It's all coming together. And let's remove those sketches so you can take a better look at how the bodies are coming alive. Two bodies. The sheet metal is going inside the trigger, just as it should. C sheet metal is right in there, turquoise. B sheet metal. And I'm using convert entities for all of these. So these are my master sketches, and then I convert the entities on a plane, and that's how I'm leaving, how I'm preventing the master sketches from being absorbed into the features. And if you want to learn how to do this, contact us at mypipelineacademy.com, and we can show you this method. It's very clean. And I simply proceed to save the bodies. So then I imported all of them into the assembly. Here in the assembly, we have the photograph in the back, and the solid bodies align really good with it. By all means, this is not a reverse engineering project. If this were, were have been a reverse engineering project, it would have been a lot more detailed than it is now. It's simply to show you guys how to achieve this and how the mechanism works. Um, some of it is a little bit cartoon cat, is quickly done, but look at it. Look at it in contrast to the drawing in the back. It aligns pretty well, other than this part, which was, the photo may have been taken at an angle, or but other than that, everything lines up right on cue looks pretty good and I'm gonna show you how it moves so I made the trigger transparent so you can see how the sheet metals move in the back so we have two configurations the loose zip tie and the tight zip tie and I'm gonna explain so loose, loose zip tie is when you have the zip tie inside and of course I know there's another more complex mechanism going here but for this video I decided to focus on this what's moving the sheet metals in the translational motion along the horizontal axis. So once you pull the trigger, it slides. You see how it's laid there? And let's make the back transparent. So we move the trigger and it slides. It's not easy to get objects to move the way you want them to in CAD, but it's a close approximation of what it's supposed to be like. Obviously, it doesn't go that far. It will come in contact before. And now let's look at the tight zip tie configuration. So this is when um, you can't pull any further. The zip tie is, is locked in, and you're about to cut it from the top. So it's tight, and then boom. 
It's like a lever. And here is a sharp edge and I'll cut it. And that's when the zip tie goes flying out. And remember here, there was that spring. See that spring? It was connected right here and it was pulling down. So yes, essentially that's the mechanism. I hope you guys enjoyed it. What would you like for us to uh, reverse engineer next and figure out how the mechanism works? Please leave in the comments below any questions. I'd love to hear your feedback. Please share this video on other Facebook pages with your friends. We need to grow this YouTube channel. Thank you so much.